Hello and welcome to Toneless Painting with M. Francis McCarthy. This is your painter in residence, M. Francis McCarthy. And welcome as well to the first day of our new series of 25 Days of Tonalism. I have talked about this before. I could call this 25 more days of tonalism. Um, but I've already in the studio started on like a third batch of 25 days of tonalism, which on my file structure in the hard drive, I've been naming another 25 days of tonalism, but it just seems to me it could get kind of ridiculous after a while. So I think I'm just going to stick with, um, we'll call this 25 days of tonalism volume two. How about that? So how about that? Um, the painting I'm bringing to you today, it's a little 5x5 five five study I did, and uh, pardon me if I butcher this guy's name. His name was Julius van Sandy Bachhuizen, and he is a Dutch painter. And I do have just a little bit of information about him that I pulled up on Wikipedia. No, some could argue that this guy wasn't a tonalist, but um, actually after looking at his... Uh, small bio on Wikipedia, he was clearly working in the same era as a tonalist. He just wasn't an American tonalist. And frankly, there's a lot of uh, Dutch work that I would type as tonalism. And at some point, I do, I mess around with Pinterest and um, I, I kind of as a reservoir of tonalist images that they, I kind of like how they, you know, they throw things at me and uh, I'll save anything. Uh, that I consider uh, valuable. I have two basic pages there. One is called Tonalism and the other is called Landscape Painting. And, um, you know, I know a lot of maybe what I define as Tonalism. Others might not agree, but uh, whatever, it's just a label. And uh, I could probably write, you know, a pretty wordy dissertation on what I think is the defining traits of Tonalism. And actually, I probably have already if you look at my my blog. Now, uh, regarding the blog, we're still not writing essays. Uh, it hasn't seemed to impact the, um, the patronage of the blog, which gives me the idea that a lot of people are just going there to look at the paintings anyway, which is fine. That's why I put up a decent resolution image uh, of every painting, and there will be one of this image. And, um, uh, you know, I have the video there. I also have some some detail images as well, which uh, I always like. And, um, you know, this has just been a progression, I guess. I started out with just text only and always some photos, of course, but predominantly writing and started videotaping back in 2014. Didn't even really, wasn't even blogging, I think, in 2014. I was on a break. Um, but when I started up the 100 Days, I had all the videos and um, decided to put them up and uh, it's kind of come around to where the video is the main thing which is absolutely fine this is a modern age so in fact the uh, the robots are getting better and better at transcribing uh, our words so uh, there's probably uh, not that long it's, I, in fact I believe there's even some um, subtitles that are provided by YouTube if you turn that feature on you'll see a bad translation of everything I say so that's just gonna get better and better um, anyway like I say uh, let's read you a little bit about Julius here um, this is from Wikipedia um, it says Julius Jacobus van de Sandy Boykhuizen uh, The Hague 18 June 19, 1835 to The Hague, October 1925, I guess that's, he was born in 18, nice long life there, 90 years, uh, was a Dutch etcher and painter in The Hague School. He was a member of a number of artist associations, blah, 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 art associations that we don't know or care about. Nice picture of him in his uh, atelier, and uh, he was awesome. I, I really like his stuff. Um, and here's a little biography. Uh, Julius took his first art lessons from his father, Hendrik uh, Van, uh, we're not even going to uh, get into that, um, who was a painter. Julius studied at the Royal Academy of Art in The Hague. In 1871, he won the Royal Medal at the exhibition in Amsterdam with his painting, blah, blah, blah. 
Uh, he spent most of his summers in Trent, which I've never heard of, often with his sister, who also painted. His works include mainly landscapes with trees often playing a prominent role. And uh, trees certainly are a good feature in this one. And the interesting thing now, the other thing that will be on that blog post that's interesting is a, uh, a copy of the original... Um, well, not the original painting, but a photo of the of his original painting that uh, I got somewhere off the internet and uh, used as reference to create my painting. So, and his has a very very loose study study type approach. Now, those of you that follow these videos in my blog uh, with any regularity will note that I did a painting uh, very similar uh, in structure uh, where I basically utilized some of these trees as reference so and as a matter of fact i believe it's also featured on the closing uh title screen of this video so every now and again i will do that where i'll, where I'll incorporate um a master's trees into a scene and uh i don't do it very often it, it definitely changes the entire tone and feel of the painting um and it's an interesting experiment I, I, I play with. It's something I sort of added to my um, quiver, so to speak, um, of artistic arrows um, last year when um, creating or recreating some failed paintings. I had some ideas to uh, composite some masters uh, trees into uh, the failed paintings uh, uh, in Photoshop and use that as reference to sort of fix up uh, these uh, or change completely in some cases these uh, failed paintings I had and I had some really interesting results and some successes there. Um, one thing I don't like to do really though is to develop um, another uh, painter, even an old painter's painting into a complete larger work and that's one of the reasons why you can see I'm doing this as five by five inches and I do the um, the other uh, studies maybe five by seven inches but I don't go any larger now at some point in the future I have some pretty good boxes full of uh, panels I've had cut I am considering jumping up to like a seven by ten and a seven by seven uh, for all of my study work so um, it's gonna that's down the road a ways because it's gonna take me a while to use up these five by sevens and uh, I'm frugal so um, but, you know, uh, I, I do end up doing most of the things I say I'm going to do. And uh, if you follow the, uh, the video series with any regularity, you'd, you'd know that. Um, so, how's it going in the studio? Well, uh, last week I uh, started, um, I did a bunch of board prep and then I uh, started in on some drawings for, I think I'm going after nine scenes. Um, it was going to be ten. I have this... Uh, 1824 panel prepped but I just haven't found a scene I think is worthy of that size and I know it doesn't seem that large but to me that's pretty large and most of the struggles that I uh, incur are uh, definitely on the larger works and uh, you know I'd, I'd hope to get over that someday I think one of the uh, the main uh, ways that I would get over that is if uh, I felt that I was uh, seeing more paintings uh, of the larger sizes sell and that's not been the case really most of the work I see selling is not that large and uh, I put that down mostly to the fact that most people just aren't that rich and can't afford the larger paintings I don't really know but um, I uh, I know that they're down the road they're in my future I'm uh, very in interesting I'm watching a series on Prime Amazon Prime uh, I don't remember the name of the series but uh, it features some law offices and uh, in these they have some of the most amazing landscape paintings in these uh, in these offices uh, that I've ever seen and they just look like a million dollars you know and uh, uh, they're all huge too so things like that kind of leave their impression I'd like to do some really really big paintings someday um, but I need to feel like I've got a good market for that work and Maybe it's a chicken or the egg, like, uh, you know, unless the painting is significantly huge, uh, people don't want it because they can't put it behind their desk or behind the sofa or what, whatever. Um, anyway, I've started on a series of, uh, for, well, for me, uh, 11 by 11 through, um, I think, a 14 by 20 is the largest one I'm going after. And uh, I'm actually home for lunch today. It's Saturday, by the way. Um, 
May 20th out here in New Zealand. And um, I'll be heading back uh, shortly and jumping into that painting, which is a scene of some uh, kind of a wooded area with a road going through it. So one of my uh, favorite motifs. Anyway, I can see we're getting close to the end. Uh, I do have some uh, paintings up on Sachi Art. There will be a link in the um, details portion underneath the video. Um, I have been kind of slack about getting more up, but I will. I will. Don't worry about it. Um, if you like these videos, click subscribe. That's awesome. We're always slowly but surely building up a pretty good crew of uh, people here that are, are digging uh, this, which is always appreciated. And um, also, you can go to my website, which is landscapepainter.co.nz. Check out my work, follow the blog. On the blog, there's a larger image of this, as well as a depiction of the original painting by Jul Julius. Uh, so uh, go check that out. And we'll be back tomorrow with one of my own paintings. Uh, so meanwhile, take good care and stay out of trouble.